One of the largest 3D printing manufacturers out there, Stratasys, just released some amazing news that's going to shake up the industry as we know it. They have locked in a deal to acquire desktop metal. Let's talk about it. Ever since going public, Desktop Metal probably hasn't had the best track record, and they went public in late 2020. Less than three years later, their stock, well, it's a shadow of what it used to be. But that doesn't mean that there's no value left in this company, and Stratasys, they saw value to the tune of $1.8 billion. And yes, that's billion with a B, and it is all stock. This is not a very common deal that you tend to see. A lot of times it's cash plus stock, but in this case, it's all stock. And that means that we have two powerhouses in the industry combining. It's like the Gretzky brothers with Stratasys being Wayne Gretzky and Desktop Metal being the other Gretzky brother that I don't even know. But they do have the best scoring record of any brothers in the NHL, so, you know. And this is kind of what this deal feels like to me. It's great for desktop metal. And if you're Stratasys, I feel like you're just kind of after the intellectual property. Desktop metal is one of the few companies that really pushes the metal FDM side of things, where instead of a polymer filament, while there is some polymer in it, it is mostly metal. And then you can burn it off and you're left with a part. Now we've covered this in a previous podcast where we talked to the Virtual Foundry, card to it so you guys can take a look, and they offer filament that lets you do something similar, but nowhere near to the precision that desktop metal does. What they do is they incorporate an entire ecosystem, not just filament, into building out a part that, while certainly nowhere near as pretty as something done in a direct metal laser sintering like LPBF, Layer Powder Bed Fusion, it is more than good enough for most applications and certainly is more than fine if your plan is to just post mill it anyways. Desktop Metal brings a lot to the table, and since their IPO, back in late 2020, it has certainly been a bit of an interesting road for them. They have gobbled up companies like Envision Tech and X1, but Stratasys has become kind of quiet. And Stratasys is kind of known for certainly not being the cheapest on the planet, because um, just look at the price of a Fortis 250 or heck, even an F370, which you could compare to my Fusion 3 F410 up there. That is uh, like one tenth of the price and still a more than usable machine. But Stratasys is known mostly for two technologies. They have their FDM line in their Fortis series, which is capable of doing materials like Ultem, PPSU, Peak, and PEC, and also the Polyjet side, which came to them via an acquisition of Objet quite a few years ago, where they started with the Connex line, and now they have the J series with the J55 up through, I believe, the J850, which gives you full color plastic parts. And I'm not talking about your 16 color bamboos. I'm talking millions of colors, Pantone certified okay, with flexible. So this is a very common material used in surgical modeling because they can put skin on the outside of something and they can make something that is reasonably clear, but still squishy, you know, like us regular non-lizard people. This acquisition to me is one that just adds to what Stratasys is capable of doing. Seeing metal come to the Fortis line would be kind of insane, but also likely way too expensive, right? It, to get Ultem, it's DRM controlled. Welcome to 2023. And it is not cheap. But if you're looking to do parts on a machine that is going to give you certified results, you're pretty much a one and done with Stratasys. Now, looking at this, it is going to be a stock only system with desktop metal shareholders receiving 0.123 ordinary shares of Stratasys for each share of desktop metal class A common stock. It represents a value of $1.88 per share of desktop metal common stock on the closing price of a Stratasys ordinary share share of $15.26 on the acquisition date of May 23, 2023. They're expecting to close everything, get all the paperwork signed, you know, T's dotted and I's crossed, if you will, by the fourth quarter of 2023, with existing strategy shareholders owning approximately 59% of the combined company and legacy desktop metal shareholders owning 41%. And we can see 
the company seemed pretty happy about it. I mean, who wouldn't be? If your company was just bought for $1.88 billion, that's a fair bit. And we're looking at an expected revenue generation of $1.1 billion dollars in 2025 just two years time i believe that would make them the first multi-billion dollar company in this industry and from my perspective i'm not entirely sure what's going on here because uh in all of it nano dimension comes back and says uh hey remember when we wanted to buy you stratasys yeah hi we'd still like to buy you and i don't understand what's going on with nano dimension it seems like they're doing everything they can to stay in the actual news as their stock price continues to fall and they're not doing anything too crazy right their tech is really cool if you don't know who nano dimension is take a look at what they do their stuff is really cool and they tendered an offer a few months back to by Stratasys, and Stratasys very quickly injected a poison pill, and it was over and done with before things ever got off the ground. Well, Nano Dimensions try to do it again, and Stratasys will do the same thing. But I believe this is Nano Dimensions' attempt at staying relevant and trying to be something bigger than it is before this deal goes through. Because as soon as this deal is fully inked and done, there's likely not a chance that Nano Dimension can afford it. If Nano Dimension can't tender an offer that Stratasys accepts, I have a feeling that Nano Dimension is not going to survive the next 24 months. But, you know, hey, this is not financial advice. It's just one man's opinion. I do wish they would do good because uh, Nano Dimension makes some pretty cool stuff, and I think it would be a great system to have under the portfolio of the rest of the company for Stratasys. But maybe Stratasys says, so instead of you buying us, why don't we just buy you? Since they've already gone on a shopping spree anyways, what's another couple hundred million between friends? And we can see that Nano Dimension has commenced this new offer, all cash, for between 38 and 40% of the outstanding shares of Stratasys for $18 per share. Even at the peak, $18 a share is quite a bit above. We're showing $15.72. So $18 a share is a pretty premium, but Stratasys likely knows we can get more than that in a different market from somebody with more money. And if this does go through, it would give Nano Dimension a controlling share of 53 to 55% of Stratasys because they already own 14.2%. So yeah, that would be a thing. And obviously this is throwing a wrench in all of it. Because remember, if you are a publicly traded company, you have a fiduciary duty to do what is best for your shareholders. And an $18 per share in cash buyout offer is quite a bit of money above where the stock is currently trading. If you're a shareholder and you're looking at Stratasys' price right now of $14 and change, you're looking at that offer and saying, well, geez, it's not bad. Now, what will come of it? Probably nothing because Stratasys has no intention of looking to be bought at this time, it appears. That should be interesting. But we can see that Stratasys has effectively one month to reply to this and decide if that's something that they would like to do. The last time, it was pretty much instantly Stratasys did everything they could. They got rid of Nano Dimension, but now they're back with a vengeance. But so what is the value here of the two companies? Because we have... Envision Tech, or now known as E-Tech, they are a SLA printing company, which is somewhat similar to the MSLA printers that you might be used to, like your Elegoos and Anycubics and all of that. But instead of a light source, it is often a laser and a galvanometer. Now, Envision Tech has a few different styles of machines out there, and I believe they're working on one that is similar to the MSLA process, but just something to be aware of. Their machines are incredibly expensive and designed for industry, like your dental and jewelry markets, where 20 grand on a printer doesn't matter, and they'll likely trust a $20,000 printer before they trust something like a $500 printer, even if the quality of the parts look exactly the same. And then we have X1. X1 is a pretty amazing company, and we actually talked with a former X1 staff member, Dan Brunimer, we'll card to his podcast so you can listen in, where he talks all about his new company, BJetting where they do binder jetting, something that X1 knows really, really well. That whole business is a really odd one because they've got some other tech in them as well. Now, they are a powder binder jetting process. That is a lot of opportunity for Stratasys to expand its offerings. But 
is there such thing as too big? Certainly, this video is not too big for you to leave a like and get subscribed if you haven't done that yet, because we do like to talk about these industry things, because this is going to change the way a lot of this industry is looked at by many people. And I'd love to know your opinions in those comments down below. Let me know what you think. And we can see that this news has been in the works for quite some time. Deals like this are not something that is inked overnight. You really got to go through the minutia to make sure that everything is exactly what you're going for. Because once it starts, you really don't have much of a chance to really slow that ship down. We can see the CEO of Stratasys is quoted saying that this is an important milestone for Stratasys and desktop metal. In light of how we have grown, it was clear that a combination of our companies would significantly accelerate our growth. This is a landmark moment that will transform our companies and help drive sustainable growth. And their network is going to cover 65 plus countries and 300 plus channel partners, allowing for significant global coverage and represented on every continent, except Antarctica, get it together, Stratasys, while giving their customers fully end-to-end -end solutions for a wide variety of materials. And that's really the benefit to Stratasys. At this point, I don't think there are many technologies that Stratasys doesn't have at least some level of access to. I don't believe Stratasys has any LPBF style machines, but now with desktop metal, you can look at viably having an upgrade path from your Fortis 450 or Fortis 900 to allowing it to print in metal, which if you already own these pieces of hardware, maybe a 50 or $100,000 software unlock and some upgrades to the hardware because we all know it's going to mostly be DRM controlled software stuff would enable your business or your operation to now be able to do metal. That's next level useful because if you've already spent the money to unlock just a little bit more, it seems like a great value. Now, what does this mean for the Prusas and the Elegus and the Anycubics and the Bamboos of the world? It, pretty much nothing. Realistically, if you are only as a hobbyist, this is not going to affect you much at all. But if your hobbyist likes to pay attention to the market, this is something that is going to kind of shape the way that we see things. Stratus is one of the original big five, the ones that came to market not through a SPAC or some sort of other fancy system. They had a legit IPO back in the day. That was a big deal. There were only a few of them, and Stratasys was one of the largest. Them and 3D Systems were often trading blows back and forth. This acquisition would make them... If I'm correct, one of the largest 3D printing companies on the planet, if not the largest. And that means that their depth and breadth only grows further, enabling Stratasys or whatever they decide to name the resulting company to reach literally end to end on the planet. As far as I'm concerned, this doesn't affect me too much other than I'll be curious to see what Stratasys does with the IP of all of these companies, including some that as far as I can tell, don't have a ton of value inside of Stratasys. The resin doesn't seem all that valuable to me because Stratasys has already acquired a resin company, Origin, and they haven't really done a lot with it. I'm concerned that adding e-tech onto it isn't going to change anything. And for those that have those hardware platforms, I might be calling my local distributor, service bureau, whomever does your work, and ask them to make sure that they're going to continue to support it. At any time, companies this size can just opt to not service these machines anymore, and that's it. You've got a very expensive paperweight. So if you can unload it or understand what the future looks like before you get too deep into it, it's a good move overall. I would love to know your thoughts on this merger and acquisition. I see a lot of value for desktop metal. And for Stratasys, I see a couple little IP pieces here and there. But obviously, their financial people are much smarter than I am. I barely can do my own books. They obviously see the value that I don't. But for desktop metal, having access to over 800 scientists, 3,400 plus patents, pending and granted. And yeah, that's an ass load of patents. So those of you that look at some of the smaller companies patenting, why don't you look at some of the bigger ones and really what they're doing? And we've actually talked about Stratasys before, and I've toured one of their trucks and we talked about their patents. So we'll, we'll card to those videos so you guys can take a look. There's a lot of things happening right now, and I'd love to know your thoughts. Let me know in those comments down below, guys. But that's all I have for you all today. Make sure if you aren't subscribed, do subscribe. And hey, support us on Patreon if that's your kind of thing. But stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, 
keep making awesome. Have a good one. But still squishy, you know, like us meat people. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video, and a massive thank you goes out to all of our Patreon, PayPal, and YouTube channel member supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Thank you for all that you do, making these videos possible. Right below me will be an old but gold video where I talked all about the Stratasys patents expiring and what that has to do with this industry. Right next to that will be our video all on open versus closed source because it's a little bit relevant. I will see you all down in those comments and in the next one. Take care.